let's move to the next topic. Um, we read, I think um, Shekin was the one who first of all was the first person who forwarded this breaking news to me that a legislator, barrister, a legislator paid $1.7 million to be made a committee chairman for petroleum and downstream sector. Barrister, what did, I don't know, did you, did you read this? Did you hear this news? Have you read this news? I've heard the news. Yeah, so but what for me? Yes, well, when you had when you read the news or when you heard the news, what came to your mind? What is your thought about this? I, I've heard the news, but for me, it is not strange. And uh, it didn't come to me as a surprise. Hold on. Because it, Sorry, it didn't come to you as a surprise that, no, of course, like me, I know definitely um, this committee chairmanship, actually something the, something changes hands. There's no doubt about that. But for that, a whooping, you were not surprised that a whooping $1.7 million, that means I did, I pressed my calculator, that is over 2.6 billion naira was paid for someone to be not the president of Nigeria, not the Senate president, but a committee chairman. Barista. I repeat that I was not surprised because if you go into the nitty gritty and understand what is there, you will understand why there is that kind of fight and there is that kind of commitment. We are talking about petroleum that is denominated in dollars, in billions of dollars. So what is 1.7 uh, million dollars? Now, look at what happens in the National Assembly, whether the Senate or the House. Why do they fight to a name for choice committees? Because the, the, more, the better committees you get, the more money that you can make. If the National Assembly by constitution have what we call oversight functions. And it is supposed to be in the national interest. We have made laws. Let's go around and see how the ministries, the parastatas, the government, public officials have carried out these uh, laws or what is happening there. But the oversight function is with a view to making law. That's what has always been overlooked. The National Assembly's power to oversight is a, a view to improving on the law. But what happens in Nigeria, it has turned into an yes. avenue for self-enrichment. If the committee is coming to your place, believe me, they have what is called zero budget. If a committee is coming to your establishment, you have to prepare, you that is in charge of maybe the managing director of a petroleum company or this thing, that is the government where you have to prepare so much incentives to that committee to avoid a situation where the National Assembly will give you zero budget. So if no matter in theory in Nigeria, no matter your performance on the job in your parastata or your company where you are the MD, you will not get a favorable, a favorable report if you do not take care of the members of the committee dealing with your sector. Now, that is one side. There are other things that uh, are put in the budget. These people, when they put and build this project in the budget, they are coming to your establishment, to your company, to your parastata, to share the loot with you, the, the budget, the project that have been put in that place for you, they are going to share the number of contractors they are going to provide, the number of contractors the MD will provide. And it's always a disproportionate uh, <laughs> sharing, which is in favor of the National Assembly members. A, a smaller percentage is left for the uh, establishment uh, management to take. So it is... Coming back to what I said before, it is 
a looting structure. It is not for the benefit of the country. It is self-interest, self-aggrandizement, self-enrichment. This is what drives the committees. So if I'm in the National Assembly and I cast my eye, I look at one of the choices committees is petroleum. I will fight to the name, not just to be a member, but to be the chairman. Because as the chairman, if I pay that $1.7 million, I can recover 10 times more than that from my oversight functions, from the contracts I will influence, from contractors I will bring to do projects, from so many avenues that they, they, they have oversight over. So it's a question of invest, it's a question of investment. The Hebrew man will say, this is my investment. So <laughs> we we'll look at it from that angle. If you don't look at it from that angle, you have not got it right. All right. So you look at $1.7 million as big money. But the man is looking at what he will get in return when he gets that position will be several times more than that. All right. Thank you so much. Anyway, um, my own is not about, I'm viewing it from a corruption level. This is the, one of the reasons why I, I, I hate democracy. One of the several reasons, actually. Um, you can imagine how expensive it is. Now, if a committee, a common committee chairman um, can make, can actually pay this much to make, of course, that means just like you said, um, it's going to make probably a million times more than that. As a as as a as a as um, a return. Um, now, what do you expect of the Senate President himself, the part of the Senate, uh, if a common committee chairman uh, can and can make such kind of money from just uh, one uh, sector? Please, uh, please don't forget. Let me give you the example. Do you remember uh, uh, Farouk Lawan? Yes. Who collected uh, the finan uh, finance uh, chairman? Yes. Uh, over $500,000 from Otedola then. Yes. So, and you can just take that as an example of yeah. what these uh, committees yeah, yeah, that they is, make yeah. this money. So yeah. also the fighting for it has to be with money. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate. Yes, I remember Farouk Lawan, who was a financial finance committee on... Uh, uh, on uh, yeah, he was uh, at the House of Rep level. Yes, right? I think yes. House, yes, House of Rep level, yeah. Um, he was a financial ch chairman committee. Now, um, to uh, share what now the person who I, I need you to enlighten me on this, please. I need information on this. I remember this uh, this person, this person who this man who bribed uh, the, pre the president. Uh, sorry, the um, who bribed uh, the speaker. Is this speaker? Yes. Speak come on. This is, we are talking about House of Rep, right? Or Senate? Sorry, I forgot. This skipped my mind. I think I read that news. Um, Shegun, are you there? I can't hear. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Is it House of Ugo Chinere, this man that we we're talking about? I remember when he was contesting. House of Rep. It's House of Rep. Uh, House of Rep, correct. Yes, this um, awesome, uh, yes, Shegun, this question is for you. Um, this Ugo Chinyere, um, Ikenga, or whatever I think uh, he made his name during the campaign season when he, he was uh, was in the. I think there was so much controversy around him to the extent that he was, I think, almost assassinated. He went into hiding or whatever. That's the same person or whatever. I don't know this. It's, it should be, you know, did, did he they come from PDP? I think he was contesting under PDP then. Did he they come to P, to APC? How did he, how was he able to get actually this guy, even though he bribed his way? Is it possible for, um, I don't know, I've not heard of that before. I don't know if it is possible for an opposition party to, to chair a committee in the National Assembly. How how was he able to, did, did he they come? Uh, did it come from uh, PDP to APC to be able to have his way as a chairman of uh, uh, to a committee, or what? And how how was he able to get to actually? How do you think? Where did he get this kind of money from? Yes, I understand he may be a businessman as a Nibo man. Where did he get this kind of money from? Shabu. 
All right. Um, the, I, the story actually um, was uh, following the news. Immediately that information came out. He also came out. Ugo Chinyere is one of the men that is um, I can vouch for, that I know is fortright and um, a member of the lower house of um, assembly. Um, you see, it, it's a power tussle. A lot of people, just like you are puzzled, that he could be in opposition and be a chairman of that kind of committee. It is actually uh, a committee that is set up to investigate um, the issues that are surrounding the NMPC, uh, the fraudulent activities of the NMPC. And I must tell you here that what is going to come out of that committee report will shock Nigerians. Oh, hold on, hold on. As I'm hold on. To... Sorry. So, oh, oh my God. So maybe you could have been the one to take this first. Now you are you are informing me probably I was wrong or we were wrong. Um, so this is not, not it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of ad hoc committee to investigate a corruption, right? Yes. Oh, okay. His job was, it, 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 it's, a, it's like a disciplinary committee oh. that was set up and he was made the chairman of that committee to find out the activities of NMPC over the years and what is going on with the NMPC, why we're having all of these problems that keep um, emanating from the NMPC and all of that. And um, you see some certain characters within that committee. Um, this is just, this is just um, off record now. Some certain characters within the committee uh, are, are trying to sabotage the efforts of that committee. Um, I, I'm reliably informed that some of them were trying to take money from some of these um, um, NMPC people to see how they can rubbish whatever report that is going, going to come out. Because or, or already, it's beginning to dig up some files. And it's, it is beginning to in, a, a expose the people who are at the top. Activities that took place under Buhari and even extended into the Tinubu regime. So that particular report that you saw there, um, uh, we, we were discussing it among some editors and bureau chiefs, and they said, look, a, a lot of people were saying, oh, uh, despite all of these guys' clean garment and everything that he's talking about, anti-corruption and everything, that he's the champion of corruption and all that. Now, Ugo Chinyere has said within the next, I think it is seven days that he has given to the that particular member who said that he paid that amount of money to be included in the committee to come out with facts or else he's going to sue. <laughs> and probably the protest uh, didn't uh, let us follow up the news again. And now that we're even talking about it, I'm going to ask, because um, there are some journalists who are already digging up information about the person. I, I heard that the person has been trying to meet with Hugo Chinyere to see how they can die down the story. Not to, to, to say that these members don't pay, uh, if not even more than that, to be a member of such committees, like you have uh, li uh, rightly uh, um, attributed here, and the barrister has also ex expanded on it. You see, you need to you need to see the kind of money that goes around, that is being passed around, around this um, committee members thing. You'll be shocked. Some of them don't even take transfers. They take the money's cash. I've been to an office of, I'm going to mention his name here, who, who was paid, and he said, ah, you know, you don't know the journalist there, yeah? you can't go bring money, come here. The money will then bring for me. No be bribe na money for my food. Imagine somebody whose money for feeding will be in a Ghana must go. I'm not talking about the small Ghana must go that you know they go now. That yeah. you need to go. Maybe you need to check the markets and see what I'm talking about. A Ghana must go that can contain a human being it was oh. brought to him. And he said that hey, na money for feeding, no, uh, uh, no be making no go ticks in a bribe. Huh? You say if you go to bring money, come here. You don't know the journalist day here. You see, the kind of money that goes around within these committee members will shock you. And like, I don't want to, I don't want to go back to what Barista has said because Barista has said virtually everything that needs to be said about how these committees are constituted and how the monies are being shared from the top to the bottom. There is nobody that is exempted. And the reason why you find some of those guys fighting tooth and nail to be a member of these committees is because of the largesse that come from it. They don't have to do anything. All they need to do is just, oh God, this thing is one billion naira. Put it at three billion. Ah, how, how do we defend? Nobody we did the committee. Come and defend it in front of us. We'll pass it as long as half of that money comes to us. They don't even hide it. They will tell you you are part of your procurement. When you see them quiz anybody, it is because the person has not gone back to give returns. 
that's when they will press the person's neck and you see they will want to embarrass the person and say, come and explain how this receipt comes here. And you don't get to see any other thing after that uh, episode that you see on TV so that you don't think that they're not working. So it still goes back to what we're saying. Our kind of, the kind of democracy we practice in Nigeria is expensive. It is expensive, it is expensive and it encourages corruption and thievery. A lot of people go in there not because they want to serve. They want to go there and see what they can make out of it. So that particular story is not even has not even ended yet because Ugochinye has threatened to sue that particular person his name as uh, uh, being someone who has paid so much now, money to now, be a member of that committee. Yeah, but if you say this this committee was um, actually for the purpose of uh, or is for the purpose of investigation, not does not the conventional committee, the permanent committee we have in this in the house. Um, so why? Why do why would someone pay to be to be um, a chairman to for a committee that uh, that is just for mere investigation? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It is no. It is not male. It is not male. You don't know what is going on. Oil sector cannot be mayor. No, the report that we bring is going to go places. It's going to affect billions. Now, no. hold on. No, hold on. You say my logic is this. Now, this is an investigative body, an ad hoc investigative body, as against a body that is a permanent thing in the House um, or in the National Assembly, where it's a regular routine that you have to. Um, actually be always, you have to be permanent touch with the sector, uh, the relevant sector. And you have, to, you have a, a kind of, the relationship would be a kind of permanent stuff uh, as long as you remain chairman. This is, is something that is, it has a time frame. investigate this, um, this sector and get report back. Now, why will someone be willing to Cut uh, to part to part with 1.7 million dollars for a an ad hoc to be the chairman of an ad hoc committee that is not that's not going to last that much time. It's, it has a time frame. What will give you the guarantee that you you'll be able to make your money? You you are this is an investment. You have your return and in, on investment. That's my point. So I'm trying to make sense out of someone paying that whooping amount to be the committee chairman. And as I always said, now I understand because that would go chinyere we mentioned about. Like I said, I got familiar with him during that election time, and I I eventually found out that he was just like you said. Then, then I thought that um, um, he is uh, actually um, a clean person. I thought that. Um, He's um, someone to actually uh, look up to. I thought that um, he's going to be do well in governance, sort of uh, being um, uh, be among the good ones. But um, when I had this, um, based on initially, uh, now initially I consider this as news and report, a cogent, uh, a, um, a genuine and authentic report. But based on what you just said, now it obviously means that. Um, that is that is a 50-50 thing that it may not be true that he bribed his way um, to where he is. If that is the case, what, what do you think? Okay, you've said, you talked about uh, the fear, of people's fear, but the members fear for, for him to release... Um, uh, fear for that he will release if he releases so making releases some information that may be uh, detrimental to uh, mm -hmm. relevant interest. Yeah, that is one. But I don't I don't get it. I'm trying to make uh, get that logic of why someone will spend that kind of that whooping amount for a community or to be a chairman of an investigative committee. Yeah. How rich is this Ugo Chinyere to be able to do this? I, I'm trying to actually frame my question the right way, but let me take it that way. How, what, 
what do you think? Uh, Barista, hold on. Uh, uh, Shego, I'll come back to you. Barista, I need you to give me at least, give me an insight probably of what you think could be going on here. Ugo Chinyere, like uh, Shegu, and, and I, I think I believe him because uh, I think I follow him for a while. I believe what Shegu says sometimes, um, that this guy is a good guy. He's a, um, he's someone that he can vouch for when it comes to being clean. So if if we go by what Shegu says, said, what do you think could be um, the, the, the reason behind the hula balloe around this whole thing? Why they? Why could he have? Why are they doing this? Why are they saying this? Why will he spend that kind of money? And if he did not spend that kind of money, why are they putting it on him? Well, uh, let me say that um, Ugo Chinjere, from the little I know of him, and I stand to be corrected, I think he was abroad, and he was. Uh, he came to contest on the platform of the PDP in Imo State, and there are the people who fought uh, Ozo Dima, who himself is super rich, even before he became governor. So for him to win the House of Rep seats in that place against um, a governor who sponsored people, who had the resources of the state and who himself was very rich. He himself was well to do before coming to that. And he has been very vocal. I remember he led the delegation to River State to meet with uh, Fubura and it became a controversy in the house. And uh, I think last week too, he led a delegation to, uh, I think, uh, to meet with former president of Basanjo uh, at Ota on some issues as well. So he has been in the limelight. Now coming to the issue of uh, a committee, whether ad hoc or not, both the standing committees and ad hoc committees are shared between the parties. The APC has majority, but there are also members of the opposition party that are also given committee chairmanship. Now, I'll just give you an example. There is an issue that $1.5 billion was spent, I think, in the last three years to revive the refineries, particularly two of them, uh, Port Harcourt and, and Kaduna. And as we speak, none of them is on stream. They have given us several dates that Port Harcourt will start. It has never started. Today, they have given us another one. Well, the timeline they gave us the Potaco refinery should have started last year. It did not start. Now, assuming a committee, the House decided to set a committee to go and investigate what happened to $1.5 billion that has been given to uh, revive this, uh, these refineries. You know that is a very huge issue. That is a very big problem. I know in Nigeria, you take it to the bank that a lot of that money will not go for the purposes for which it was allocated. OK, all right. Sorry to cut you short, because um, I don't want us to overflow this. We have to move to something else. Now, um, my point is this. If it is just meant for investigation, what is the rationale for someone like, now, I'm coming back to Shegun, because um, since you vouched for this Sugochinere, what is the rationale for someone like Gochinere to be appointed by the speaker to actually chair this ad hoc committee? If he is clean, is as clean as you may, as you said, you think um, the speaker of the house, which we know that uh, we know quite well that he's a stooge of uh, uh, well, uh, of uh, Bola Tinubu, and every stooge of Bola Tinubu is as corrupt as Bola Tinubu as well. So, uh, do you think um, if he is that clean? That the speaker would have appointed him to this to such a sensitive ad hoc committee that has that is there that is actually there to unravel the mysteries behind all the crimes in that sector. 
All right. If to, to to be very fair to the speaker, the lower house of assembly has been one of the most vibrant of the two houses between the upper and the lower houses. Um, to be very very fair, because we have some very vibe. You need to listen to their sessions. You need to watch their sessions, their plenary, and listen to how people argue logically at their arguments. That they don't. The speaker does not seem to be somebody who is um who can lord himself over those guys who are at the lower house. The people in the lower house are not like the senators that you have who say yes to Akpabio. Even Akpabio still have some people who don't say yes to him. That is on one side. On the second, on the second hand, you see, it is not up to the speaker alone to decide who is going to chair any committee. Uh, um, the, the leaders of the lower house or the upper house will have to take a decision and act, agree on the, within themselves who they think is best suitable to lead some of these committees. That is on another hand. And again, you, I don't want us to conclude that this corruption issue that has been raised is true. You, the way you're talking about it, you're talking about it as if it, is, it has been confirmed. It is still a rumor. It is still a story. That's why Ugo Chinyere came out himself and said, look, this issue that has been raised here, this person, this fellow who has raised this issue will be investigated. And if the person does not come up with proof that this happened, he's going to sue. And I just told you here that people who have been following the story said, the man who made this, the story has been trying to reach out to Ugo Chinyere, probably to find a way to, to pacify him, to say, look, Oga, I was sent to do this. Because don't put away the place of propaganda and deceit out of all of this. When you are focused on doing a task and they know that you're going to do the task thoroughly, especially when you have found out some things that, of course, the committee members would know. And but, do you, but do you they believe... They the spanners. Yeah, but do you believe that... Do you believe this saying that goes... Um, in every in every rumor, there must be an element of truth. Of course, definitely. Of course, definitely. I agree, and that's why we see. That's why we have put Ubotinero. It belongs to two two of three different groups that I'm a member of. When we saw the story, we put up to we put it up to him, and he laughed, and he said, "You people, don't, you people are talking and acting as if you don't know who Nigerians are." When you are doing a good job, as you're presenting your program, now there are people who are watching and saying, "This man is exposing too much truth." And they will want to find a way to shut you down. Do you know that the, the, the Minister of Communication is even talking now about regulating some of these programs that are not uh, 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 registered under CAC or probably that are the traditional means of uh, communication? There are people who don't want these truths to come out. So I, I, I am not, I'm not saying I'm not saying absolutely that what the person has said is a lie. Of course, we've seen where people take Farouk Lawan is a, is a very good example. Even Akpadio is a very good example. Didn't he tell us here that the people will find their their goodwill messages in their in their emails <laughs> after telling them that they are going to there's good money that has been shared for people to so look, corruption is going on in high places, and so is propaganda, lies, and deceit. That's what I that's where I want us to hang this hang this on until we get to the end of it, because he has said he's going to sue. It was on national television. I, I'm going to dig up the, the his speech on that particular, on that on this particular issue and share it with you. And he has said that if the person does not come up with proofs, he's going to sue. For me, I think it's just a distraction. Something is going to be unearthed, and they don't want the, it to come to the fore. All and right. that's one of the reasons why they're throwing spanners in the works. All right, thank you so much. Anyway, um, like you said, I, I think I have this, this. I I had. I don't know of now again because uh, I need this rumor to be clarified because uh, Nigerians, the moment you become a politician, a different thing becomes it becomes a different ball game. I had I had the same view of you about this Ugo Chinyere too because uh, I saw him as a good guy who was fighting the powers that be when he was campaigning against the governor of uh, the Enugu State, um, that uh, Hopus or Dimma. Also, um, in mm. states, so, sorry. So, um, so anyway, we'll see where, where it goes to. And I, I hope, I hope it's not my own problem is that there's, there's still the puzzle is still nobody we've not solved that puzzle. And that puzzle is what because one, this guy is a PDP chairman, a PDP member. And I know I've not had read a report where that he did the camp to APC. And how could he have become how, how did he get to be the chairman? Of a committee under as an opposition party member, a sort of so that is one. Secondly, that this guy is, is clean to my to my to the best of my knowledge, at least clean until proven guilty, a sort of um. So, uh, so I, the puzzle because under this government of Tinubu, we all know that 
Tinubu is completely, totally in charge, in control of the National Assembly. Is there anyone, is there anyone among you, Barrister and uh, Shogun, do you, any of you believe, um, have, sorry, have a contrary opinion um, from me that Bola Tinubu is totally, it's not, it's not a 50%, is totally in charge, or rather, totally in control of National Assembly? Just a direct yes or no. Barista. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, contradict that statement. Yeah, Both okay. Them, no, to the president. Yeah, then uh, what about Shemu? Yes, um, it's a 50-50 thing. I don't agree that he's in total control, but I think he has some control. Yeah, okay, all right, fair enough. Now, honestly, I believe he has total control of it because, uh, and that is how, first, he has total control of the leadership um of both houses he was instrumental to the appointment of these two leadership uh both abbas and um and again for clarity abbas is someone i think i i've i i know not too well we met we traveled to few some countries in the past together um and so um we on on the delegation so it's someone we have lodged in the same hotel uh, uh flew on the same flight Together, we've been the three weeks we were together. We were very uh, relatively um, in close conversation. So I've, I know Abbas. Uh, so I, I I don't know if I consider him a friend because we are not that close. But the three weeks we were together, we were relatively we were, I, in that delegation. I was we, I was it was we were closer. I was closer to him than any other any other member of that delegation. Then so um, that's for clarity. However, um, I, I, I one thing about me is I always say things no matter who's uh, no matter who is involved there. Now, like I go back to my point, Tinubu was he, he if if he was instrumental to the leadership of both chambers, and we all know how Tinubu plays. That if if for you to be submissive, for you to be to be answerable to Tinubu, you must you you. I don't want to use that word must, but it's a criteria. It's a, it's a yardstick for you, definitely for you to be corrupt. You have to have those con those, those tendencies. And if you are not corrupt, um, you cannot be. And as far as I'm concer concerned, the National Assembly, both arms, uh, both chambers rather, are corrupt. And if they are corrupt, what do, why do you think um, a speaker we want to appoint. I don't know if I I, I don't know how hundred how sure you are Shegu, to have said that uh, um, that the speaker does not have total control of who become the chairman of uh, such an uh, such an ad hoc committee. Um, I don't know if you are right, uh, Barista. Probably you have to weigh in on that. But um, but I doubt it is you are that is correct. Uh, I think a speaker has that power to unilaterally. He can make he can consult with people, but I think he has the power unilaterally to actually um, make appointments like this. These are appointments; they are not elected. So appointments like this, I don't think uh, uh, whatever. So that is it. My own point is: How do you expect? You see, what I'm driving at is: If the National Assembly is this corrupt, one way or the other, Barista agrees with me. Uh, Shego agrees with me, fifty percent. But the the bottom line is. We all agree, we are on the same page that the National Assembly is corrupt. So how do you, I, I, I don't understand, my point is, how do you expect an incorruptible to come out of corruptible? That is my point. In a nutshell, why would they appoint Ugo Chinere if we believe what, if we believe in my initial thought of who Ugo Chinere is, his pedigree, and what, uh, and, uh, what uh, Shegu told us, said, uh, told us that he believes he is, um, why should a corruptible appoint an incorruptible to actually chair an investigative committee that will be, uh, that the, the investigative committee on a corruptible sector? Um, Barista. Yeah, you have to 
go back to some, you know, um, the speaker of the house, Abbas, was actually a candidate first of uh, Erufai. Before it was Erufai that sold his candidacy to uh, Tinubu. Then, but it was Erufai that uh, put him forward as a speaker and he sold his candidate to Tinubu. Now, while they were there, there were other people who also, who also contested Wasi in Plateau and uh, 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 this other guy in, in, in Kano. When the speakership is being uh, uh, fought for, the house breaks into several groups, several camps, each supporting a particular candidate. The group of Ogochin were the ones who allied with some members of APC to support uh, uh, Speaker Abbas to emerge as Speaker. So when you emerge like that, you cannot forget the groups that you went around with campaigning and who supported you to be Speaker. So you you have to put them, carry them along when the issues come because they will still defend you when they want to remove you. They will still stand by you for you to enable you to have that majority in the house as against the other people because there's all constant jostling. If today now, there's, as we hear, there are groups in the Senate that want to remove uh, Akbabio. So there's constant jostling for these positions. So you need to maintain your support and your majority in these uh, chambers that right. you have. So there are various various factors that we, uh, it could be, okay, you supported me, this is an opportunity, I'll give you this. It could be from an altruistic uh, motive, I believe you are clean, you will give me a good report from this uh, assignment. So I'm not uh, discounting one for the other, but there are several reasons that somebody could be appointed chairman of our ad hoc committee or even chairman of a standing committee. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, um, that will bring us initially the last topic. Uh, we have spent uh, much time on this. So we'll move, in, we'll move the last topic to the uh, next uh, episode. Um, so we can't, uh, because last topic may take us another time. So let's not go into that. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be discussing that on our next episode. Uh, in that note, I think we'll be rounding up. Except, um, um, Shegu, you have any other thing to say on everything we have said so far from the beginning to the end? I'm going to I'm going to still emphasize on the last um, topic that we discussed. Um, it, it is not everybody who is in the um, national assembly that is corrupt. I don't want us to go with that. Um, no, 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 no. I I agree. With, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I agree absolutely with you on that. Of course, we have clean people. Uh, but my problem, my, what I am, I'm, I was actually, my point is the leadership, on the leadership level, um, I told you, at the, leader, at the leadership level, I don't think there is anyone that is not ready to play ball, that, that is not even playing ball with Polatribu right now. That's okay. my point. Okay. Go ahead, please. Okay. All right. So um, I, the, the, the matter with uh, Ugo Chinyere is still ongoing. What I suspect is going on is probably somebody felt he, he would have been made the chairman. And unfortunately, Ugojiri got the, the nod and then um, decided, like I said, to throw spinners in the works. We will still keep it in view and continue to look at it. Then again, um, on the issue of our democracy, I think we still need to continue to emphasize this, that the kind of democracy we practice, we all agree here that the kind of democracy we practice is not the way forward for uh, for us as a people and as a country. And that's one of the reasons why people who keep yearning for a military government, whether right or wrong, they seem to be more uh, decisive and seems to understand how to move forward better than the civilians that we have. Probably when we evolve, the kind of, um, uh, whatever name we're going to call it, democracy or militarocracy or whatever it is we're going to call it, that, uh, that um, will carry us forward as a people, maybe then we'll be able to move ahead um, as a country. That's my con contribution. Thank you so much for that. And uh, I don't know, uh, Barrister, you're posing as if you want to still have something to say. Um, no, no, I'm... I'm even, uh, my, my, bat my battery is even... Oh, okay. 
All right. My light has gone off. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Barista. Austin Manta is a legal practitioner of um, over four decades. For those of you who, do not, who um, did not know him before now, so he's a very senior lawyer, very, very senior lawyer. And uh, we have um, um, uh, Mr. Shegun Onibio, who is also a senior um, journalist, who has been very, very forthcoming with information with me. Um, honestly, I appreciate um, all the, I appreciate him keeping me up to date with the information, actually. So thank you, gentlemen. It's a pleasure. It's thank a pleasure you. being here. All right, uh, viewers, I'll uh, see you again next week and uh, remain. Bless. Thank you.